I also know that all around the world there are thousands of small Catholic radio and television stations run by dedicated and faithful Catholic communicators, and that you too are rebroadcasting this signal live from St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. I know that you truly represent the church around the world. Uh, Radio Peter Torot in Papua New Guinea, Radio Pachis in Arua, Uganda, Radio Veritas Asia in Manila, the Philippines, Radio Veritas in South Africa, and so many more. A warm welcome to you wherever you are, whoever you are, and however you may be following this sound, whether on radio, television, or the internet. You can follow this ceremony also on the Valley YouTube channel, or better still, on our new Vatican News web portal, which you can find at vaticannews.va. In fact, you can follow us on just about every broadcast platform possible. Preceded by bishops and cardinals, Pope Francis makes his way into the Basilica, accompanied by the notes of possibly one of the most famous of all Christmas candles. small detail you might have noticed the Holy Father's liturgical advisors would have given him a selection of pastoral crosses to choose from and the one that he's holding is the pastoral cross that belonged to St. John Paul II so a sign of continuity what we hear now is the calenda. The calenda is the traditional proclamation of the birth of Jesus. It comes from the Roman martyrology, the official listing of the saints celebrated by the Roman rite of the Catholic Church. The centuries it was read on Christmas Eve, just before the celebration of Mass, as we're hearing it now. And the tradition 
of chanting the calendar was one that was reintroduced a few years back by Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. I'll let you hear a little bit in Latin and then translate it because it is quite rare to hear the calendar and it does help us enter into the spirit of this celebration. Amigrazione Abrae, Patris nostri in fide, de urcale de orum, seculo vigesimo primo. As the name suggests, it is like the calendar of events that begins on December 25th, the seventh day of a lunar month. Innumerable ages, reads the text, have passed since the creation of the world. And in the beginning, God created heaven and earth and formed man in his own image. Many more centuries after the flood, when the Most High placed his rainbow in the heavens as a sign of the covenant and of peace. From the migration of Abraham, our father in faith, from Ur of the Chaldeans, 21 centuries. From the exodus of the people of Israel into Egypt, led by Moses, 13 centuries. From the anointing of David as king, about 1,000 years. Septingentesimo quinquagesimo secundo. Anno imperi Cesaris Octaviani Augusti quadragesimo secundo. In the 65th week, according to Daniel's prophecy, in the year of the 194th Olympiad, from the founding of the city of Rome, 752 years. In the rule of Caesar Octavian Augustus, the 42nd year. patris fidius, mundum volens adventus suopissimo consecrare, de spiritu sancto conceptus, novemque post conceptionem de cursis mensibus. In the whole world being at peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God, the eternal Father's Son, being pleased by his coming to consecrate the world, by the Holy Spirit conceived, nine months having passed since his conception, in Bethlehem of Judah was born of the Virgin Mary and the King Mass. Domini nostri, Jesu Christi, secundum carnem. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. At this moment you hear the bells of St. Peter's ring out. And the Pope removes the veil covering the image of the Christ child, which has been placed in front of the main altar where he will be celebrating past the sea. Christ child is laid in a beautifully ornate structure which contains also the book of the Gospels. And the symbolism is, is quite clear, the, the word of God and the word made flesh. Pope Francis reverences the image with incense. as the Antiphon hymn begins in the background and the entrance procession concludes and makes its way to the high altar, the altar at which only the Pope may say Mass. That's the altar beneath that magnificent structure in bronze known as the Baldacchino, or the canopy created by that genius Baroque artist Gian Lorenzo Bernini. The white altar beneath the baldacchino, beneath the canopy, stands perpendicularly above the tomb of the Apostle Peter. So there again we have this marvelous sense of continuity. Peter, the Prince of the Apostles, the first Pope, all the way through to Pope Francis.
group of children representing different nations of the world, stressing the, the global dimension, not just of the church, but of the message of salvation. Place floral arrangements around the, the image of the Christ child. The image that at the end of Mass will be taken in procession through the nave to the crypt scene that has been prepared at the entrance to the basilica. the altar and again with the incense he reverences the altar and we think of what that incense means the the smell of the incense the the presence of God in our midst he reverences also the crucifix that stands above the altar and reminds us of how the story of salvation begins with the birth passes through a passion and death and ends in a resurrection and the promise of eternal life. The Pope also stops briefly before a beautiful ancient and carved wooden statue of Our Lady. I always love this statue because if you have the opportunity to see it, Mary is not holding the Christ child to herself. She's almost thrusting him out towards us. Her hands are outstretched, even the child's hands are outstretched, and you have this marvelous forward movement, Christ coming into the world, reaching out to us, and, and coming to meet us where we are. People have come to St. Peter's Basilica from all over the world this evening. The, the church is absolutely full, and there are almost as many people outside in St. Peter's Square following the ceremony on giant screens in St. Peter's Square. It's not very cold in Rome this evening, about 10 degrees, which is very pleasant, so um, people can fairly comfortably stand outside and follow this celebration, which begins now. You'll be hearing the voice of Pope Francis in Latin with the sign of the cross beginning this celebration. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pax Vobis. Et cum Spiritu Tuo. Fratres, anius camus peccata nostra, ut aptissimus ad sacra misteria celebranda. Confiteo de... nostri omnipotente Deus e dimissis peccatis nostri per vucat nos abitam et Amen
Oremos. Deus, che an sacratissima notten, veri lumini fecisti l'utrazione clarescere, da questumus, o cuius in terra misteria luci agnovimus, e ius cuoco e gaudis perfuamur in cielo. Chi te convivit regna in unità di Spirito Santi, Deus, per omnia secula seculor. Amen. Before turning our attention to the first reading, the Pope prays the collect. It's addressed to God, who made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light. Grant, we pray, that we who've known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. The first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It's chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. The reading will be proclaimed in Italian. And for those of you who do Dal not libro have del hand, profeta Isaia Il popolo che camminava nelle tenebre ha visto una grande luce su coloro che abitavano in terra in tenebrosa una luce rifulse on those who live in hai moltiplicato la gioia a light has hai aumentato la letizia Gioiscono davanti a te, come si gioisce quando si miete e come si esulta quando si divide la preda. Perché tu hai spezzato il gioco che lo primeva, la sbarra sulle sue spalle e il bastone del suo aguzzino, come nel giorno di Madian. Perché ogni calzatura di soldato che marciava rimbombando e ogni mantello intriso di sangue saranno bruciati, dati in pasto al fuoco. Perché un bambino è nato per noi, ci è stato dato un figlio. Sulle sue spalle è il potere e il suo nome sarà Consigliere Mirabile. For there is Dio a potente, born for us, Padre per sempre, us, Principe della pace. Grande sarà il suo potere e la pace non, affra, non avrà fine sul trono di Davide God, e sul suo regno, Father, che gli viene a consolidare e rafforzare con il diritto e la giustizia, no end, ora e per sempre. David and for his royal power, questo farà lo zelo del Signore degli eserciti. Verbum Domini. The psalm is Psalm 95. Today a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. di giorno in giorno la sua salvezza in mezzo alle genti narrate la sua gloria a tutti i popoli dite le sue meraviglie
gioiscano i cieli, esulti la terra, risuoni il mare quanto racchiude. Sia in festa la campagna e quanto contiene. Acclamino tutti gli alberi della foresta. al Signore che viene, sì, Egli viene a giudicare la terra, giudicherà il mondo con giustizia e nella fedeltà i popoli. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. The reading will be given in Spanish. The theme, God's grace, has been revealed to the whole human race. Lectura de la carta del apóstol San Pablo a Tito. Querido hermano, se ha manifestado la gracia de Dios que trae la salvación para todos los hombres, God's enseñándonos a que, renunciando a la impiedad y a los deseos mundanos, llevemos ya desde ahora una vida sobria, justa y piadosa, aguardando la dicha que esperamos y la manifestación de la gloria del gran Dios y Salvador nuestro, Jesucristo, el cual se entregó por nosotros para rescatarnos de toda iniquidad y purificar para sí un pueblo de su propiedad, dedicado enteramente a las buenas obras. And to purify a people so that it could be his very own. It had no ambition except to do good.
gospel like a mission now bring you news of great joy today a savior has been born to us christ the lord it's the same theme for the gospel reading which will be proclaimed in Dominus Latin. A reading taken from the Gospel according Lexio to Sancti Evangelii Secundum Luca. For listening to the words of the Gospel, the book of the Gospels is reverenced also with the incense. This Gospel according to Luke is chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. Today, a Savior has been born to you. Factum est in diebus ilis. Exit edictum a Caesare Augusto, ut describeretur universus orbis. Hec descriptio prima facta est preside sirie quirino. Et ibant omnes ut profiterentur singuli in suam civitatem. Ascendit autem et Iosef a Galilea de Civitate Nazare, in Judea min Civitatem Davi, que vocatur Bethlehem, eo quodes et de domo et familia Davi, ut profiteretur cum Maria desponsata sibi, uxore pregnante, who was with child. Factum est autem cum essentibi. While they were there, the time came for her to have a child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. Primogenitum. Et panis eum involvit, et reclinavit eum in presepio, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him. Et pastores erant in regione adem, vigilantes et custodientes vigilias noctis supra gregem su. In the countryside close by, et angelus dominis tetit juxta ilos, took it in turns to et claritas domini circum fulsit ilos, the angel of the Lord et timuerunt to them, timore and the glory of the Lord manio. shone around them. Et dixit ilis angelus, they were terrified, no but the angel timere. said, do not be afraid. Et ce enim evangelizo vobis gaudium manio, Quod erit omni populo, quia natus es vobis hodie salvatur, qui es Christus Dominus in civitate Davi. Listen, I bring you news of great joy. Invenietis infantem panis involutum et positum in presepio. He is Christ the Lord. Et subito facta and here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favor. Verbum Domini. is taken in procession back to the Holy Father, the 
use it to bless the faithful present in St. Peter's Basilica. Also remember that if you are participating in this liturgy, whether it is on television, radio, or on the internet, these blessings are valid to you as well, wherever you are. The book will then be placed on the structure before the altar where the, the figure of the Christ child has already been laid. Again, to emphasize the Word of God, the written Word of God, and the living, incarnate Word of God, represented by the child. listening to Pope Francis homily, the homily that he has prepared for this Christmas Mass during the night, as it's, as it's known, Midnight Mass, as it used to be called. I have no idea what time of the day or night it is in your country, wherever you may be listening or following this broadcast, but it's just after 10 p.m. here in Rome time. Maria diede alla luce il suo figlio primogenito, lo avvolse in fasce e lo pose in una mangiatoia perché per loro non c'era posto nell'alloggio. Con questa espressione semplice ma chiara, Luca ci conduce al cuore di quella notte santa. Maria diede alla luce. Maria ci ha dato la luce. Un racconto semplice Mary per immergerci nell'avvenimento che cambia per sempre la nostra storia. Tutto in quella notte diventava fonte di speranza. Andiamo indietro, indietro di alcuni versetti. Of that holy night. Per decreto dell'imperatore Mary Maria e Giuseppe si videro obbligati a partire. Dovettero lasciare la loro gente, la loro casa, la loro terra e mettersi in cammino per essere censiti. Un tragitto per niente comodo né facile per una giovane coppia che stava per avere un bambino. Si trovavano costretti a lasciare la loro terra. Nel cuore erano pieni di speranza e di futuro a causa del bambino che stava per venire. I loro passi, invece, erano carichi delle incertezze e dei pericoli propri di chi deve lasciare la sua casa. E poi si trovarono ad affrontare la cosa più forse più difficile arrivare a Betlemme e sperimentare che era una terra che non li aspettava una terra dove per loro non c'era posto e proprio lì in quella realtà che era una sfida Maria ci ha regalato l'Emmanuele il figlio di Dio dovette nascere in una stalla perché i suoi non avevano spazio per lui. Venne fra i suoi e i suoi non lo hanno accolto. E lì, in mezzo all'oscurità di una città che non ha spazio né posto per il forestiero che viene da lontano, in mezzo all'oscurità di una città in pieno movimento e che in questo caso sembrerebbe volersi costruire voltando le spalle agli altri, proprio lì si accende la scintilla rivoluzionaria della tenerezza di Dio. A Betlemme si è creata una piccola apertura per quelli che hanno perso la terra, la patria, i sogni, 
per sino per quelli che hanno ceduto all'asfissia prodotta da una vita rinchiusa. Nei passi di Giuseppe e Maria si nascondono tanti passi. Vediamo le orme di intere famiglie che oggi si vedono obbligate a partire. Vediamo le orme di milioni di persone che non scelgono di andarsene, ma che sono obbligate a separarsi dai loro cari, sono espulsi dalla loro terra. In molti casi questa partenza è carica di speranza, carica di futuro. In molti altri questa partenza ha un nome solo, sopravvivenza. Gli erode di turno che per imporre il loro potere e accrescere le loro ricchezze non hanno alcun problema a versare sangue innocente. Maria e Giuseppe, per i quali non c'era posto, sono i primi ad abbracciare colui che viene a dare a tutti noi il documento di cittadinanza. Colui che nella sua povertà e piccolezza denuncia e manifesta che il vero potere e l'autentica libertà sono quelli che onorano e soccorrono la fragilità del più debole. In quella notte, colui che non aveva un posto per nascere viene annunciato a quelli che non avevano posto alle tavole e nelle vie della città. I pastori sono i primi destinati, destinatari di questa buona notizia. Per il loro lavoro erano uomini e donne che dovevano vivere ai margini della società. Le loro condizioni di vita, i luoghi che, in cui erano obbligati a stare, impedivano loro di osservare tutte le prescrizioni rituali della popolazione della purificazione religiosa e perciò erano considerati impuri la loro pelle i loro vestiti l'odore il modo di parlare l'origine li tradiva tutto in loro generava diffidenza uomini e donne da cui bisognava stare lontani avere timore, li si considerava pagani tra i credenti, peccatori tra i giusti, stranieri tra i cittadini. A loro, pagani, peccatori e stranieri, l'angelo dice, non temete, ecco vi annuncio una grande gioia, che sarà di tutto il popolo. Oggi nella città di Davide è nato per voi un Salvatore, che è Cristo il Signore. Ecco la gioia che in questa notte siamo invitati a condividere, a celebrare e ad annunciare. La gioia con cui Dio, nella sua infinita misericordia ha abbracciato noi, pagani, peccatori e stranieri, e ci, e, ci e ci spinge a fare lo stesso. La fede di questa notte ci porta a riconoscere Dio presente in tutte le situazioni in cui lo crediamo assente. Egli sta nel visitatore indiscreto, tante volte irriconoscibile, che cammina per le nostre città, nei nostri quartieri, viaggiando sui nostri autobus, bussando alle nostre porte. E questa stessa fede ci spinge a dare spazio a una nuova immaginazione sociale a non avere paura di sperimentare nuove forme di relazione in cui nessuno debba sentire che in questa terra non ha un posto. 
Natale è tempo per trasformare la forza della paura in forza della carità, in forza per una nuova immaginazione della carità. La carità che non si abitua all'ingiustizia come fosse naturale, ma ha il coraggio in mezzo a tensioni e conflitti di farsi cassa del pane, terra di ospitalità. Se lo ricordava San Giovanni Paolo II, non abbiate paura, aprite, anzi spalancate le porte a Cristo. Nel bambino di Betlemme, Dio ci viene incontro per renderci protagonisti della vita che ci circonda. Si offre perché lo prendiamo tra le braccia, perché lo solleviamo e lo abbracciamo perché in Lui non abbiamo paura di prendere tra le braccia, sollevare e abbracciare l'assettato, il forestiero, l'ignudo, il malato, il carcerato. Non abbiate paura. Aprite, anzi spalancate le porte a Cristo. In questo bambino Dio ci invita a farci carico della speranza. Ci invita a farci sentinelle per molti che hanno ceduto sotto il peso della desolazione che nasce dal trovare tante porte chiuse. In questo bambino Dio ci rende protagonisti della sua ospitalità. Commossi dalla gioia del dono, piccolo bambino di Betlemme, ti chiediamo che il tuo pianto ci svegli dalla nostra indifferenza, apra i nostri occhi davanti a chi soffre, la tua tenerezza la nostra sensibilità e ci faccia sentire invitati a riconoscerti in tutti coloro che arrivano nelle nostre città nelle nostre storie, nelle nostre vite. La tua tenerezza rivoluzionaria ci persuada a sentirci invitati a farci carico della speranza e della tenerezza della nostra gente. Moved by the joy of the gift, little child of Bethlehem, we ask may shake us from our indifference and open our eyes to those who are suffering. May your tenderness awaken our sensitivity and recognize our call to see you in all those who arrive in our cities, in our histories, in our lives. May your revolutionary tenderness persuade us to feel our call to be agents of the hope and the tenderness of our people. The words of Pope Francis, his reflections, for the solemnity of the Nativity of our Lord during this Mass, during the night of December 24th, 2017. moment of a silent reflection to meditate on those words to which we will return perhaps during the, the communion portion of the Mass. In a few moments, the Sistine Chapel Choir will lead us in the singing of the Creed, our profession of faith and the reason why we are participating in this celebration here in St. Peter's Basilica this evening.
We now prepare to listen to the universal prayer, the prayer of the faithful, which literally represents the universality of the church. Fratelli e figli carissimi, nella luce del Natale, a portatrice di salvezza, invochiamo dal Signore la pienezza della sua grazia. The Pope invites us to ask the Lord for the fullness of His grace. Oremus pro ecclesia sancta Dei. Holy Church. 
耶稣，你是真天主真人，求你使天主的圣教会始终散发他的恩宠，保护他圣洁无瑕，热切期待所希望的幸福。Pro publicis moderatoribus, and we will hear it prayed in Arabic. Liurshidahum Yasu'ul Mushirul Ajib, liyukawinu shu'uba salam, yamla'uha alhamas lil a'mal al-saliha, full of zeal for good works. Oremus pro familia. Our prayer for families, prayed in Portuguese. Jesus, Deus poderoso, que dá aos homens a salvação, reanime a fidelidade e doação mútua dos esposos e abra aos filhos sendas de serenidade e autêntico amadurecimento. Hearts of peace and true growth. Oremus pro peccatoribus. A prayer for sinners. This time, Jesus in Romania. Principe le pace. Se rescumbere de tutte le peccatele. Redeems us from every sin and restore them to new life. Oremus pro juvenibus. And finally, a prayer for young people. This time in Bengali. He pro pujishu. Shorgosto Pitar Ek Matro Putro Tumi Tadir Ke Shikha Dao Ki Bhabhe Jagotik Bashona Dek Kora Jai Ebon Ki Bhabhe E Jagote Shongjom Ne O Doya Shoho Kare Jibon Japon Kora Jai A te, Signore Padre, per sempre presentiamo le nostre povere vite. Colmaci con la tua presenza e trasformaci con la tua grazia. Per Cristo nostro Signore. Amen. To you, Lord, our eternal Father, we offer our humble lives. Fill us with your presence and transform us. takes his place before the high altar as the offertory procession begins, bringing the gifts up to the altar, the bread and wine that will be used during the sacrifice, and other gifts, the people bringing the gifts to the altar represent different nations, different walks of life.
universal aspect of this celebration is always being stressed, as you can see through the languages and through the people, and also through our connections around the world. Right now, our friends at Salt and Light Television will be happy to know that there's a Canadian connection here in St. Peter's this evening. Christopher and Sophie Hefferman are Canadian diplomats, currently posted in Abuja, Nigeria, where two children, 10 and 7 years of age, accompany them to bring their gifts up to the Holy Family as well. Universality is represented not only by nations and languages, but also by different groups of people. The church embraces young and old alike. That universality is also represented not just inside, but outside the basilica as well. The Christmas tree. This year comes from Poland, the nativity scene, which comes from an abbey in southern Italy. And the presence of just so many people drawn to St. Peter's Basilica at this particular time of year. The scene, in fact, comes from the Italian Benedictine Abbey of Monte Vergine. It was Poland's Warmia Archdiocese that donated the fir tree, which is the tallest of the Christmas trees in Rome right now. Something very specific is the, uh, the tree is decorated by children, children who are undergoing cancer treatment in various Italian hospitals. Received the tree and the nativity scene in Rome and thanked the, the donors for providing these gifts. He especially thanked the children, whom he said were conveying to Jesus their dreams and their desires through these decorations. The tree itself, he said, pointing upwards, urges us to stretch out towards the highest gifts, to rise above the clouds and to feel how beautiful and joyous it is to be immersed in the light of Christ. The Pope has said more than once that it's always his wish at this time of year that the birth of our Lord may be an occasion for all of us to be more attentive to the needs of the poor and to all those who, like Jesus, find no one to welcome them. That was very much at the center of his homily which you heard earlier this evening as well. It's in the simplicity of the Christmas crib, he says that we contemplate the tenderness of God, that tenderness which is manifested in the figure of the Christ child. centered very much on the tenderness of the Christ child. Orate frate, sud me un adversum sacrificium, acceptabile fiat apodeum patrem omnipotent.
Grata ti visi Domine, quesumus, odierne festivitatis oblatio, ut per ex sacro santa commercia, ed in io si veniamo in forma in quotecum una nostra sostanza, che vive e regna in secula seculorum. Amen. Domine Hoviscum. E con spirito tuo. Sursum corda. Patemus a Domino. Grazie sagamus Domino Dio nostro. Vero digno e giusto neste con e salutare, non ti vi sempre di tuo vico grazie sagere, Domine, Sante Pater, Omnipotens Eterne Deus. Chi ha per incarnati verbi misterium, novamentis nostri oculis, lux tue claritatis infusis, ut dum visibiliter Deum cognoscimus, per un invisibilium amorem rapiamur. E ti dio con angeli e arcangeli, con troni e dominazioni, con cui omni milizia celesti e esercita, in un gloria tu e canimo sine fide di cento. Te usi tu clementissime Pater, per Gesù Cristo un figlio in tuo, Dominum nostrum, supplice rogamus ac petimus, ut accepta abias et benedicas, et dona, et munera, et santa sacrificia et libata. In primis quae ti vi offerimus, pro ecclesia tua santa cattolica, quam pacificare, custodire, adunare, e rege di ignieris, tutto orbe terrarum, una con me indigno famulo tuo, con ecclesi tue preese voluisti, et omnibus ortodoxis al precatolice, et apostolice fidei cultorimus. Memento, Domine, famulorum, famularumque tuarum, et omnium circunstantium, quorum tibi fides cognita est, et nota devotio, proquibi, proquibus tibi offerimus, Vel qui ti vi offro un tox sacrificium laudis, pro sesquisque omnibus, pro redenzione animarum suarum, pro spesalutis et incolumitatis sue, ti vicque reddut vota sua, eterno Deo, vivo et vero. Comunicantes, in notte in sacratissimam celebrantes, qua beate Maria intemerata virginitas, uic mundo edidit salvatore. Sede in memoria un venerantes, in primis e iusdem gloriose semper virginis Marie, genetricis e iusdem Dei e Domini nostri Iesu Christi. Sede in beati Iosef e iusdem virginis sponsi, et beatorum apostolorum ac martyrum tuorum, Petri et Pauli, Andrea, Iacobi, Ioannis, Tome, Iacobi, Filippi, 
Bartolomei, Mattei, Simonis e Taddei, Lini, Cleti, Clementi, Xisti, Corneli, Cipriani, Laurenzi, Grisogoli, Ioanni e Paoli, Cosme e Damiani, et omnium santorum tuorum, quorum meritis precibusque concedas, ut in omnibus protectionis tue muniamur ausilio. Anche si tu l'oblazione in servitutis nostri, se del conte famiglie tue questo mutomio placatus accipis. Diesque nostros in tua pace disponas, a tua eterna in tua a tua eterna damnazione non seripi, et in elettorum tuorum iubias e crece numerari. Quan in oblazione in tu Deus, in omnibus quesumus, benedictam, ascritam, ratam, razionabilem, acceptabilem que facet dignere, ut nobis corpus et sangui, fiat dilectissimi fili tui, Domini nostri, Iesu Christi. Qui pridie quam pateretus, accepit panem in santas venerabiles manos suas, et elevatis oculis in celum, a te de un Padre in su, un Omnipotente, tibi grazia sagens benedixit, fregit, dedico ai discipoli suis dicis, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes. Hoc est enim corpus meum, quod provobis tradetum. Simile modo, pos quan cenatum est, accipien setum per clarum calice, in santa sac venerabiles manus sua, tibi gracias a est, benedixit, dedico e discipuli sui, accipite et vivite ex e omnes. Hic est enim calic sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti, qui provobis et promultis et fundetur in remissione in peccatoro, o facite in mea commemorazione. Mysterium Fidei servitui, sed plebs tua santa, e iusen Christi, fili tui, Domini nostri, tam beate passioni, nec non che tab inferi resurrezioni, sed et cin celos gloriose ascensio. Oferimus preclare maiestati tue, de tuis doni sagdatis, ostiam puram, ostiam santam, ostiam immaculatam, panem santum vita eterne, et calicem salutis perpetu. Supra que, propizio a seleno vulto respicere digneris, et accepta avere, sicute accepta avere dignatus es, munera apueritu iusti abel, et sacrificium patriarche nostri abrae, et quotibi optuli, sumus acerdus tuus melchisere, santum sacrificium immaculata nostra. Suplices, te rogamos, omnipotente Deus, 
Juve e per ferri per mano santi angeli tui, in sublime altare tu, in cospetto divine maestà di tui, ul coco in saraltare per l'espiazione, figli tui corpo si sanguini subserimi, omni benedizione celesti e grazia repliamo. Memento e siam domine, famulorum famularum quetuarum, qui nos precesserum cum signo fidei et dormium in somno pacis. Ipsis domine, et omnibus in Christo quiescentibus, locum refrigeri e lucis et pacis, ud indulgeas de precamur. Nobis quoque peccatoribus, famulis tuis, de multitudine miserationum tuarum sperantibus, parte mariqua ed estocietare donare dignieris, con tuis santis e apostolis et e martiribus, cum Ioanne, Stefano, Mattia, Barnaba, Ignazio, Alexandro, Marcellino, Petro, Felicitate, Perpetua, Agata, Lucia, Agnete, Cecilia, Anastasia, et omnibus sanctis tuis, intra quorum nos consorcium, nonno estimator meriti, sede bene quesumus largitor admitte, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Per quene comnia Domine, Semper bona creas, santificas, vivificas, benedicis et prestas nobis. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, estibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Precepti salutavi omoniti e divina istituzione formati, audemus dice. Liberanos questum domine abominum malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, utope misericordiae tue adiuti, et a peccatus simus semper liberi, et abomini perturbazione securi, spectantes beata am sven, et adventum salvatoris nostri Iesu Christi. Domine Iesu Christi, qui disiste apostolis tuis, pacem meam, relinco vobis, pacem meam do vobis. Nel respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, e anque 
secundum voluntatem tua, pacificare quadunare dignedis, qui vives e regna in secula e seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini, si semper vobis. Et un spirito tuo. Offerte vobis pace. We're all invited to share some sign of peace, which takes on a special significance. During this celebration, which commemorates the birth of the Prince of Peace, and we remember that message of the angels to the shepherds of Bethlehem, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to all those who enjoy his favor. Ecce agnus ei, ecce quitolis peccata mundi, beati che accenon agni vocati sunt. Domine nostru dignus, vite sustentum meum, se tanto qui verbo che sanabit tut anima mea. We have arrived at the moment of Holy Communion, the many priests who have been celebrating at this Mass, priests very often representing the different pontifical colleges and universities, the different seminaries around the city of Rome. They have taken up their positions in the congregation and begin the distribution of communion. As we hear the Sistine Choir intoning the communion at the
we take this opportunity to go back briefly over the words of Pope Francis during his homily at this Mass. In fact, I found it interesting how the Holy Father chose to present the Christmas story in a way that the familiar places, people, and themes of the story were made to apply to the world of today and clearly to the experience of every modern-day migrant and refugee hidden in the footsteps of Joseph and Mary, said Pope Francis, we see the footsteps of entire families, millions of people who do not choose to go away, but driven from their land, leave behind their dear ones. In many cases, he said, this departure is filled with hope, hope for the future. Yet for many others, this departure can only have one name, and that is survival, surviving the Herods of the day who, in order to impose their power and increase their wealth, see no problem in shedding innocent blood. And yet, it is the birth of Jesus, said Pope Francis, that changes our history forever. With his birth, everything becomes a source of hope.
as we listen to Silent Night somewhere in Italian, see images of the nativity scene, we are reminded of what Pope Francis said when he met the donors on the Christmas trip this year. The nativity scene that comes from the Italian Benedictine Abbey of Monte Vergine. He said, the crypt scene is the place where we contemplate Jesus assumed our wretchedness invites us to do likewise through our acts of mercy. In fact, the nativity scene this year in St. Peter's Square is dedicated to and illustrates the theme of the works of mercy. The Pope said his hope was that the birth of our Lord could be an occasion for all of us to be more attentive to the needs of the poor and to all those who, like Jesus, find no one to welcome. During his homily earlier in the Mass, he said, in fact, that the faith we proclaim tonight makes us see Jesus present in all those situations where we think he's absent. He's present who's often unrecognizable, who walks through our cities and our neighborhoods, who travels on our buses and knocks on our doors. Christmas, said Pope Francis, is a time for turning the power of fear into the power of charity, into the power for a new imagination of charity, a charity that does not grow accustomed to injustice. The distribution of Holy Communion is concluded. In a few moments, Pope Francis will pronounce the closing prayer, and that will be followed <coughs> by his solemn blessing. And I repeat what I said earlier in this broadcast. It's important to remember that by decree, a decree of many years ago, made by Pope St. John Paul II, that blessing is valid to you, whoever you are, and however you may be following this broadcast, whether on radio <laughs> or television or the internet. That apostolic blessing comes straight to you, to your home, and to your heart. Oremos. Deus <laughs> Noster. Ut qui nativitatem redentoris nostri frequentare gaudemus, dignis conversationibus ad eius mere amor per venire consorcium. Qui vive terrenia, in secula seculo. Amen. It is a solemn triple blessing that happens on these rare and special occasions. We will be invited to bow our heads and then receive the triple blessing. Inclina te vos ad benedizione. Deus infinite bonitatis, qui incarnazione fili sui mundi tenebras e fugabit, et teas gloriosa nativitate agnoten sacratissima ingradiavit. E fuget a novit tenebras viziorum, et irradet corda vestra luce virtutum. Amen. 
Qui quei salutiferi nativitatis gaudium magnum, pastoribus ab angelo, volvit nunziari, ipsemente vestra suo gaudio impleat, et vos evangelii sui nuncius efficiat. Amen. E chi per eios incarnazione terrena celestibus ociavit, dono vos sue pacit, et bonit repliat voluntatis, et vos facciat ecclesi consortes esse celestis. Amen. E benedicio dei onipotentis, patris et fili et spiritus santis, descenda super vos et maniat sempre. Amen. Mesa Est, indicating the conclusion of the Holy Mass. But before we leave, I think you need to know what that blessing was all about. The tripartite blessing in Latin that you have just received. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, by that glorious breath has illumined this most holy night. God, who will, with the great joy of his son saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Finally, may God, who by the incarnation brought together earthly and heavenly reality realm, fill you with the gift of his grace. Thank you.
accompanied by this wonderfully rousing version of Come All Ye Faithful and by a group of children representing different nations of the world. Pope Francis processes down the main nave of St. Peter's Basilica carrying the image of the Christ child, an image that he will now place in the nativity scene that has been especially prepared at the very entrance to the basilica. On the floor is, of course, the coat of arms of St. John Paul II, who is responsible for the restoration of this part of the basilica. The huge nativity scene inside the church that stands inside the chapel that is normally dedicated to all the baptisms that will take place here in St. I think it's important before we leave you to remind you also of what Pope Francis said this afternoon, just after midday, after praying the Angelus in St. Peter's Square. In his reflections, he said, as we prayerfully await the birth of the Prince of Peace, let us invoke the gift of peace for the world, especially for those people who are suffering because of ongoing as we celebrate Christmas, I renew my appeal to St. Pope Francis that people who have been abducted, priests, religious men and women, lay people, may be released and be allowed to return to their homes. Pope Francis also prayed for the people of Mindanao in the Philippines, which has been struck by a storm that's caused many victims and much destruction. Merciful Lord, receive the souls of the dead and comfort those who are suffering because of this disaster, he said. And finally, the Pope greeting the leaders, faithful, pilgrims from various nations, families, parish groups, and associations. He said, In these moments of Christmas, I invite you all to find the time to stop in silence. It's also said on other occasions that every year both the Christmas crib and the Christmas tree become symbols of the compassion of our Heavenly Father, of his participation and closeness with humanity, reminding us that we are not abandoned in the night of times, that we are accompanied always amidst all our sufferings, all our challenges. That's the message that I would like to leave you with this evening, today, after joining us for this Christmas Mass here in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. I'd like to thank all of you, CBS News, our friends at Shalom World TV, Relevant Radio, Sirius Radio, EWTN Television, Net TV, Salt and Light Television, Telecare TV, Catholic TV, and Radio Maria. And all of you who joined us by different means of 
communication by satellite view and television or internet. Do know that the full report on this mass, including the transcript of the Holy Father's homily, uh, is available on our new web portal at vaticanviews.org. We'll be back live in World Vision tomorrow at midday road time for the Pope's Ulbi et Orbi blessing, his blessing to the city of Rome and to the world. We hope you can join us then. In any case, I'm Sean Patrick Lovett wishing you the most blessed and happy of Christmases from all of us here at Vatican News of the Vatican Secretariat for Communications. Our day to Jesus Christus, Christ, be Jesus Christ.